Good evening and welcome. Welcome to this special broadcast of the Delaware Park Somacast Replay Show. Um, we're going to be showing you highlights of the 2020 stakes season here at Delaware Park. So let's get right to that racing action. And the first stake of the year was the Avia Stakes, which was run on opening day, which occurred on June 17th this year. The Avia Stakes, as we all know, is the local prep for the Delaware Handicap. And the Avia had a field of eight, a nice field of eight. And the favorite in the mile and eighth event was, hold on, Lady Apple. Lady Apple with Ricardo Santana was the favorite. I don't have my glasses, so I have a hard time seeing. So here's the Obia. They open the 2020 racing season at Delaware Park. We're about set. And they're off. Pretty good start for them all. Gotham Gala is going for that lead. Right there is Stablemate, Fashion Faux Pas right alongside, and Bronx Speedy moves up with the rail. Those three across the track into the first bend. Up on the outside, Vault looking for a spot. Lady Apple between horses. Wicked Awesome has the rail. Then comes Lucky Move, and Trolley Ride is the trailer as they make their way around the first turn with Bronx Beauty showing her sprint speed. Leads it by about a length and a half. Gotham Gala apparently settling in that second spot nicely. Half length further back up on the outside is Fashion Faux Pas. Wicked Awesome has the rail. Lady Apple's right alongside, and three wide, that's Vault. Lucky Move is toward the outside and down toward the inside. Trolley Ride, the trailers. Opening quarter went in 23-1. and one. Honest tempo as they move down the Delaware backstretch. Bronx Beauty is showing the way, still by three parts over. Gotham Gala, same margin out of Fashion Faux Pas. The Delacour Riders side by side. Down a length further back to Wicked Awesome moves up on the inside of Lady Apple. Up there, three wide as Vault, four wide as Lucky Move in the trailer trolley ride. Only about six and a half lengths separates the field. Half and 47 and one. They've got a half mile to go. Fashion Faux Pas now being sent to the front and opens up a length. Here comes Vault and Lucky Move moving up there three wide. Bronx Beauty is through. Lady Apple has to get going out. Gotham Gale has dropped out of it. They've got a quarter to go and long shot. Lucky Move made a huge move around the bend and Vault is trying to go with her. Those two are going to square off as they head for home. Fashion Faux Pas dropped back. Lady Apple has to do more. They've gone the six furlongs in the picket fence. One eleven and one. A furlong to go. Lucky Move bidding for the big upset. Vault on the inside is trying to battle back. Four lengths further back to Lady Apple in third. It's Lucky Move striding nicely down the lane and Lucky Lucky Move is going to upset in the Obeya. Wins it by a length and a quarter. Vault had to settle for second. It's lucky Move, the second longest shot in the uh, field of eight, wins the Obeya by one and a quarter lengths and pays 87.60 to win. Lucky Move went on, or uh, in 2020, went on to win one other uh, race so far this year. On October 24th, she won the state bred Empire Distaff. Breeders' Cup for $175,000 at Belmont Park. Okay, next up on the stakes docket for 2020 was the Christiana Stakes. And this race was for three-year-olds, three-year-old fillies, and it was run on the grass. The Christiana was run on July 4th, which was part of our Delaware Oaks card. It attracted a field of eight, and the two-to-one favorite in the race is the two in Boston, ridden by Fergal Lynch. Here they go in the Christiana Stakes. And they're off in the Christiana. It's a good break for them all. Duchess of Sussex toward the outside broke a bit awkwardly, but going for that lead. Trickle in is there with Emboss toward the inside, followed by in between horses. That's Toolcat looking for a spot. She likes to be on the front end there, but she won't be there, at least for now, as Trickle in shows the way past the finish line the first time. Toolcat racing second, and Boss settles nicely toward the inside of Duchess of Sussex. Correctness up on the outside, racing in fifth, followed by Kiss the Girl toward the inside. Then comes American Giant, and the trailer is pure with them as they make their way around that first turn. Opening quarter went in 23-2. and two. Moderate fractions on the front end, set by Trickle In. Toolcat is right there in second, and Boss settles nicely in the third with Duchess of Sussex right alongside. Two and a half to Correctness and Kiss the Girl, followed by American Giant, and the trailer is still pure with them as they make their way down the Delaware backstretch. Trickle in, showing the way by three parts of a length. 
Right there, that's Toolcat in second, and Boss is still patiently in third. Duchess of Sussex right alongside. Then comes on the inside, that's Kiss the Girl. As they make their way to the men, correctness is next in line, followed by American Giant. They've gone the half in, 47 and two, half mile to go. Trickle in, and McCarthy still to catch. Toolcat right there alongside challenging, and Boss now under a drive in third. Duchess of Sussex racing fourth. Not much is coming from the back of the pack as they make their way around the bend. Toolcat and Trickle in are head to head at the top of the turn. Trickle in on the inside. Toolcat is game on the outside trying to come back for more. It's still about four lengths further back to the rest of them. It's a two-horse affair right now. Trickle in on the inside. Toolcat on the outside. Four lengths and Boss is trying to rally. Correctness to the inside. Gamely trying to hold on. That's Trickle in. On the far outside, a late rally from American Giant. Also, Duchess of Sussex it's coming with embossed, but it's going to be hanging. That's the six. Trickle in, ridden by Trevor McCarthy, trained by Michael Stidham, and owned by CJ Thoroughbreds, taking the Christiana by a length and paying 980. The daughter of Temple City in 2020 has had three starts and two wins with earnings of $57,000. Okay, next up is the second biggest race of the season at Delaware Park, the Grade 3. Delaware Oaks, and this year the Delaware Oaks had a purse of $300,000. It's running at a distance of a mile on the 16th. The Delaware Oaks attracted a field of eight fillies, and the favorite in the race was the two, Place of My Heart, ridden by Joe Talamo. Here goes the field of eight in the grade three, mile on the 16th, Delaware Oaks. And they're off in the Delaware Oaks, and the eight Queen Bridget got away with a slow start there. She almost walked out of the gate there. She's already given the field about eight or nine lengths. Toward the inside, Peace of My Heart has some company from Long Point Beach up on the outside, Project Whiskey. Those three across the track into the first turn. We also have a trio behind, Comical toward the inside, followed by Hopeful Growth, and up there on the far outside, Dream Marie. Princess Katie's tucked in nicely behind that group, and far back, the Queen Bridget, who had a slow start and is already maybe 15 lengths behind the field as they make their way around the first turn. Opening quarter in a solid 23 and 1 as they reach the back stretch. Peace of my heart, showing the way by a half. Right there, Long Point Beach between horses. Up on the outside, Project Whiskey. They're still head to head to head as they make their way down the Delaware back stretch. Comical tucked in nicely in fourth. We'll get a perfect trip. Next in line, up on the outside is Dream Marie. Hopeful growth, looking for room between horses. Follow Princess Katie and far back the Queen Bridget, who's been outrun so far every step of the way. Half in 47 to 1 as they race into the turn. Peace of my heart. Still to catch with Joey Talamo by three parts of a length. Long Point Beach is still stalking in second as they make their way to the turn. Project Whiskey on the outside. Comical now shoots up through the rail. Dream Marie is going to make a move for Bravo quickly. Dream Marie makes the first move and he's going after that leader as they make their way around the bend. Dream Marie on the outside. Between horses, Project Whiskey down toward the inside. Peace in my heart. Princess Katie begins to kick it in from the back, followed by Hopeful Growth and Comicals drop back a bit as they turn for home. It's wide open. Dream Marie, Project Whiskey bidden for an upset. It's those two as they square off there. Princess Katie's also gaining momentum on the outside for a long time. Project Whiskey's digging in. Dream Marie and Bravo trying to go on by. These two have two lengths on Peace of My Heart and Princess Katie. It's down to these two. Project Whiskey, a game effort today. She may pull the upset. Project Whiskey edging away to upset in the Oaks. Dream Marie getting second. second. Princess long, Katie. Long shot in the field of eight. Project Whiskey with Frankie Paddington. Trained by Robert Reed, owned by Cassius King and LC Racing, wins the Delaware Oaks and returns $79.60. Project Whiskey, a daughter of, daughter of Tapasar, has 10 career starts, three wins, a second, and two thirds. The uh, Delaware Oaks remains her only, only graded stakes victory. After the Delaware Oaks, she finished second in the grade three Mammoth Oaks. Okay, next on the docket is the Kent Stakes, which was also run part of the Delaware Oaks card. The Kent Stakes is for three-year-olds. It's on the grass, and it attracted a field of seven. The favorite in this race was the six, Goofo, with Trevor McCarthy. Here they go in the Kent. Set. And they're off in the Kent Stakes. All come away to a good start. Sensation is going to be sent to the front by Bravo. Bye-bye Melvin toward the inside moves up quickly as they race down the chute there. Sensation leads it by maybe two lengths. Vansy up on the outside. Bye-bye Melvin. Secures a good spot toward the inside, racing in third, followed by Talking under a nice hold. Pixelate right alongside. Your trailers are the favorite Gaffo and me and Mr. C. As they pass the finish line the first time, opening quarter, 24 seconds flat.
Sensation is showing the way by a length and a quarter. Vansy up on the outside racing second. Bye bye Melvin saving all the ground in third. Pixelate is clearly fourth right now as they make their way around the bend, followed by Talking, who settles in the fifth. A gap of three and a half lengths to Guffo, who's now about nine or ten lengths off that leader, and the trailer is me and Mr. C as they straighten away down the Delaware back stretch. Half and 47 and two, they pick things up just a bit there, and it's still Sensation being nursed along by Bravo by about a length and a half. Vansy toward the outside racing second, bye bye Melvin's going nicely in third, followed by Pixelate in fourth. Length further back to talking. Gaffo yet to get underway. Still about seven lengths off that leader. And me and Mr. C is the trailer as they make their way into the far turn with Sensation to catch. Leads it by about a length and a half over Vansy. Bye bye Melvin. Still with the rail. Followed by Pixelate alongside. Gaffo now begins to edge closer with talking toward the inside. Me and Mr. C is the trailer. About seven lengths from front to back with a quarter to go. Sensation still to catch. Leads it by a length as they turn for home. Vansy racing second there. Bunching up. Gaffo swings to the far outside. Looking for his patented run. We'll see if we get it here. It's Vansy now taking on Sensation. Pixelate is there. And here comes Gaffo. The long strides of the son of Declaration of War. And Gaffo is eating them up and passing them by. Pixelate trying to go with him, but Gaffo is edging away. Pixelate a game second, followed by Vanzi and Talking. Gaffo with Trevor McCarthy, trained by Christoph Clement, owned by Otter Ben Stables, wins the Kent by a half a length with his patented late kick. Gaffo went on to win what well, ran second in the Saratoga Derby at Saratoga and then won the Belmont Derby, the Grade 1 Belmont Derby at Belmont on October 3rd. In 2020, Gaffo has five starts, four wins a second with earnings of $383,000. Okay, that does it for the Delaware Oaks Day Stakes. Now we're going to switch gears and get into the Delaware Handicap Day Stakes. And the first stake on Delaware Handicap Day was the six furlong Dashing Beauty for Phillies and Mares. Uh, the purse was $75,000. The field, there was a field of nine and the favorite in the field of nine was a bit of both, ridden by Irad Ortiz. A bit of both was seven to five. Here they go in the six furlong Dashing Beauty. And they're off in the Dashing Beauty. Pretty good start for them all. Shalom breaks well, fires right to the front, but quickly, Doctors of Mischief. Down toward the inside, a bit of both moving up there. Last True Love is right there between them. Four of them scrimmage for that lead down the back stretch. Two lengths further back to I'm the Talent settles nicely into that fifth spot as they move down the back stretch. Toward the inside, Warm looking to move up. Then comes Anna's Bandit, followed by Get Out of My Way and Dixie Serenade. Opening quarter goes in 22 seconds flat as they race into the turn. A bit of both on the inside. Doctors of Mischief between horses. Shalon is right there. Those three abreast as they race into the turn. Two and a half lengths further back to. Warm was on the move in fourth and going after the leaders, followed by Last True Love. On the outside, get out of my way, trying to rally. Anna's Bandit has no racing room now, looking to move up there with a quarter to go. It's Shalon trying to shake free from a bit of both. Two lengths further back to Doctors of Mischief. On the outside, Warm is trying to kick it in as they hit the top of the turn. They have 44 and 2. Shalon showing the way by length of bit of both, trying to hang in there in second, followed by Warm trying to rally. Anna's Bandit is now kicking in in third, going after the top two, but may run out of real estate. It's Shalon down the lane, drawing away for Trevor McCarthy. Shalon will win the Dashing Beauty. A bit of both getting second followed by Anna's Bandit and Get Out of My Way. Shalon, ridden by Trevor McCarthy and owned and trained by Local Connections, owned by Layal Stables, trained by Arnaud Delacour, who's stabled in Fair Hill. Shalon won the Dashing Beauty by two and a quarter lengths. The daughter of Dialed In, the six-year-old daughter of Dialed In, has a career record of nine wins, eight seconds, and a third from 23 starts with earnings just under a million dollars. Okay, the Robert G. Dick is next, and Robert G. Dick is usually run on the turf, and it's usually a grade three, but unfortunately rain forced it off, and we had to run the race on the main track, and it also reduced the field to five. The favorite in the race was the five, Gentle Ruler with Chris Landaros. Here they go in the Robert G. Dick. And they're off in the Robert Dick Memorial. This one's on the dirt this time. Let's see one to come out with that lead on the outside test down toward the inside saffron spirit most of them under a nice hold right now general the favorite is right there between horses next in line tightly twisted followed by shift for magician they're across the track in the early going as they come down the home stretch the first time and Tass leads it by about a length saffron spirit hands the rail general right there tugging at the bit between them tightly twisted up there three wide and shift from magician is the trailer it's been a comfortable tempo in the first quarter mile 25 and three about as comfortable as you can get as they make their way around the bend on the front end, Tass staying off the rail, leads it by about three and a half lengths. 
On the outside, tightly twisted, Jenna Ruler between horses, Saffron Spirit has the inside track, and Shift from Magician is the trailer as they coast around the clubhouse turn. Opening half mile goes in, 49 and 3, picked up the tempo just a bit there, and Tass is showing the way by four lengths. Tightly twisted second, Jenna Ruler amongst horses there on the outside, tightly twisted on the inside, that is Saffron Spirit as they make their way down the back stretch. On the front end, it's still Tash showing away by four. Tightly twisted right there. Jenna Ruler toward the inside. Saffron Spirit and Shift from Magician right alongside as they approach the half mile marker. Opening six furlongs goes in 113 and four as they make their way to the chair with Tash still on the front end and still going well, it appears. Tightly twisted is right there, and Jenna Ruler moves up on the inside as they close in on that leader, Tass, with three eighths to go. Tightly twisted, and Jenna Ruler. Jenna Ruler is going to take the inside track. Tightly twisted on the outside as Tass has begun to fade. Shift from Magician next in line, followed by Saffron Spirit. Now they're hooked up. It's tightly twisted on the outside. Jenna Ruler on the inside, and they've got a quarter to go. Tass has dropped out of it, then Shift from Magician and Saffron Spirit as they turn for home. It's a two horse affair. Tightly twisted, and Jenna Ruler are still head to head with a furlong to go. Tightly twisted on the outside. Jenna Jenna Ruler's digging on the inside and now increases the margin to a half a length. Maybe a length. Jenna Ruler begins to edge away. Tightly twisted his game, but not good enough today. Turf or dirt doesn't make a difference. Jenna Ruler wins the Robert Dick Memorial and back-to-back -back years. Wins it by three and a half. Tightly twisted second. Saffron spared up for third. Gentle Ruler, ridden by Cortis Landaros and trained by Ian Wilkes, wins the Robert G. Dick. He pays 240, 210, and 210. Next up is the feature race of the 2020 season, the grade two $400,000 Delaware Handicap. As you know, the Delaware Handicap usually has a purse of $750,000 and running at a mile and a quarter. But this year, due to the COVID-19, the distance was uh, reduced to a mile and eighth and the purse was $400,000. Delaware Handicap attracted a great field of six. The favorite in that field of six was the two to five favorite, Dunbar Road with Irat Ortiz up. Here they go in the grade two, Del Cap. And they're off in the 83rd running of the Delaware Handicap, and they all break together. Between horses, Bellera showing the most foot. Dunbar Road toward the inside, going to secure that rail. In between horses, Wicked Awesome up on the outside. Lucky Moves making an early move, and up on the outside, Saracosa. We have now three across the track into that first turn. Bellera has company from Lucky Move on the outside. Sarasota's looking for a spot. Dunbar Road has had the dream trip so far, saving ground all the way around that bend. Wicked Awesome between horses up on the outside. That's Saracosa now back in the fifth. Overthinking is the trailer. Compact group, only about four lengths separates the field as they curl around the clubhouse turn. Opening quarter went in 23 and 4. They've got about six furlongs to go. And Valera leads it by neck. Lucky move. Winner of the Obey is right there in second. Dunbar Road still with the rail racing in third as they make their way down the back stretch. Saracosa's caught three wide down the backside. They've got just over five furlongs to go now with Wicked Awesome in between horses. And the trailer still down the back stretch is overthinking, but only about five lengths from front to back. Half went in 48 and 1. They've got a half mile to go just over that. And Bellera and Lucky Mover side by side. Dunbar Road still a patient third toward the inside with Saracosa up on the outside of Wicked Awesome and overthinking the trailer. Not much has changed down the back stretch as they make their way into the turn. Lucky move on the outside. Bellera on the inside. Dunbar Road still patient for Ortiz to the inside of Saracosa. Then comes overthinking and Wicked Awesome now begins to. To retreat three eighths to go and lucky move is now in front lucky move leads it by length dunbar road off the rail now by ortiz and is coming with a run saracos is trying to stay with her as they turn for home with three across the track and dunbar road has company from saracos on the outside dunbar road now leads it by a length length and a half saracos couldn't go with her lucky move trying to hang in their third for long to go and it's dunbar road increasing the margin to three to four Saracosa is clearly second right now, overthinking with a late rally, but it's a classy filly indeed here. Dunbar Road wins gear down the Delaware Handicap by three and a half. Saracosa That's Dunbar getting... Road with Irad Ortiz, trained by Chad Brown, owned by Peter M. Brandt, winning the Delaware Handicap by three lengths and returning 240, 210, and 210 to win. Uh, Dunbar Road went on to finish third in the, bell, the grade, two, grade two bell name and then ran a nice race in the Breeders' Cup to staff. Uh, Dumbo Road has a career record of 10 starts, six wins, one second, and two thirds with earnings of just over a million dollars, probably a little bit more than that. She's a four-year-old daughter of Quality Road. Okay, after the Delray Handicap Day, the next big stakes race day was Owner's Day, which was on Saturday, September 26th, and Owner's Day, as you know, 
features Delaware certified breads and also horses that run here at Delaware Park. It's a day that we showcase the best of the best of Delaware racing. It's a really neat day and we had five stakes races. The first of which was the $100,000 Small Wonder Stakes for Delaware bred or certified two-year-old fillies. The Small Wonder attracted a field of 10 and the favorite in that field of 10 was the 11 Street Loot with Brian Pedro Pedroza up. Here they go in the Small Wonder Stakes. And they're off in the Small Wonder. Street Loot breaks well toward the outside. Tactical Pajamas is right there. Heartful of Souls in between horses as they duel for that lead as they move down the back stretch. There are four across the track. Down toward the inside. Plain Drunk moves up on the inside, taking over third now. And Tactical Pajamas back in the fourth. And the gap of three to laugh in place, followed by Juror number four, looks to move up on the inside of that one. Then comes the Goddess of Snakes as they make their way into the turn. Up on the outside, Hickory Dickory Dock, followed by Anginetti. And the trailer is Mabilis with three eights to go. Street Loot leads it by two lengths. Heartful of Soul racing second. On the move, that's Plain Drunk on the outside in third as they hit the top of the turn. Then the gap of two to Juror number four was trying to kick it in in fourth. It's Street Loot to catch. Plain Drunk on the outside is making a run for Heart of Soul. is dropping back just a little bit, followed by Juror number four. And on the outside, Hickory Dickory Dot. It's still Street Loot showing the way and going strong. Street Loot in front by three and a half lengths. Plain Drunk racing second. Heartful of Soul. Juror number four and Hickory Dickory Dock closing on the outside, but it's going to be Street Loot to win the small wonder by about five. Going to be tight for a second. Plain Drunk, I think, hanging on That's a second. That's a five-length win for the 11 Street Loot, ridden by Brian Pedroza, trained by John Robb, and owned by Lucky Seven Stables. The two-year-old daughter of Street Musician followed her victory in the small wonder stakes by running a sharp second in the Maryland Million Lassie on October 24th at Laurel Park. The next owner day stake was the tax-free distaff. And the tax-free distaff is for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, with a distance of six furlongs. And this race attracted a field of eight. The favorite in that field of eight was Pink Caddy with Abner Adorno up. Here they go in the tax-free shopping distaff. And they're off. It's a pretty even start for them all. Still alive toward the inside, 15 Royals, and Madamina rushing up with the rail. Madamina with the rail with a slight advantage of a 15 Royals and Map of America. Dancer's Melody in a good spot racing in fourth, followed by Still Alive in fifth. Pink Caddy, the favorite up on the outside, racing in sixth, followed by Crazy B and Quiet Imagination. They speed down the back stretch. On the front end, Madamina by a length over 15 Royals and Map of America up on the outside. Dancer's Melody is going along racing in fourth, and the gap of two to Pink Caddy. Then comes Quiet Imagination, Crazy B, and dropping back, still alive. A winning quarter went in 22-2 and two as they race into the turn with Madame Mina to catch. Leads it by about a length. Dancer's Melody is going to try and shoot that rail. Up on the outside, Map of America is there as they make their way around the bend. On the front end, it's Madame Mina by two. Dancer's Melody racing in the second. They're across the track there, followed by dropping back now 15 Royals, trying to come on the inside, Quiet Imagination. On the outside, Map of America and Pink Caddy trying to kick it in, but Madame Mina got the jump on him. Now opens up four or five on the field. Looks like they're battling for the balance with Dancer's Melody, Quiet Imagination. On the outside, Map of America and Pink Caddy won't do it today. It's all Madame Mina and Jamie Rodriguez to win it by about seven lengths. That's one, Madam Mina, trained by the leading trainer here at Delaware Park, Jamie Ness, notching a eight and three quarter length victory in the tax-free shopping distaff. Madam Mina went on the run third in the Malvern Rose at Presque Isle on October 22. Next up, DTHA Governor's Day Stakes. The race attracted a field of four. The favorite in the field of four was the three, wait for it, with Abner Adorno. Here they go. And they're off in the Governor's Day Handicap. All four of them come away to a good start. They're up on the outside, rushing up there, fact-finding once that lead. Two decks expectations toward the inside. Waitford is racing third, and into the turn, it's onto the fleet. Your trailer has the force of mixed away around the clubhouse turn. Fact-finding on the outside leads it by length. Two docks expectations with the rail, not drops back just a bit. Waitford moves up alongside of that one, and the trailer is onto the fleet, about five lengths from front to back as they make their way around the first turn. Opening quarter goes in 23 and 1. Good solid tempo being set by Fact Finder, showing the way. Leads it by two. Wait for it, racing in second. Then a gap of two lengths further back. Onto the fleet, begins to move up on the outside, and Tudor expectations to the inside. They're paired off at the back. 
It's still fact-finding on the front end. Leads it by a length and a half. Wayford is racing in second, two and a half to honor the fleet, and two docks expectations toward the inside. Still about four and a half lengths separates front to back. Half goes in 47, make that 46 and two. Identical quarters there as they race into the turn. Fact finding continues on the front end. Wait for it is chasing in second. It's about three or four lengths further back now to Tudex expectations and on to the fleet. The trailers as they race around the bend with fact finding still to catch. Wait for it is trying, but fact finding is digging in there and holding on by three lengths. Wait for it chasing in second on the inside. Tudex expectations on the outside. It's on to the fleet as they turn from with fact finding the great to catch. They went the six in the picket fence. One eleven and one. Fact finding opens up five on the field. Now the battle is strictly for second. It appears on the inside. Inside two docks expectations into that spot. Wait for it racing in third, but it's all fact finding. Virtually from gate to wire, fact finding, and Carol Sedania will win the Governor's Day handicap. Geared down to the final 70 yards by about seven. Fact finding with the leading jockey from the 2020 meet. Carol Sedania wins the Governor's Day stakes by 11 and three quarter lengths and pays 420. Next up on the docket is the Newcastle Stakes, which is for three year olds going six furlongs. It's for Delaware bred or certified three year olds and up. Here they go in the $100,000 Newcastle. And they're off in the Newcastle. Pretty even start for them all. They're across the track, battling for that early lead. So Street is there. Try for gold on the inside, quickly to challenge. Followed by up on the outside where she told me to go racing third. Cozy Cat on the far outside. Toward the inside, that's Tap and Cat as they make their way down the back stretch. Threes over deuces between horses. The trailer is Aspect. As they race toward the half mile marker, it's so Street to catch. Where she told me to go racing second. Golden Candy's moved up on the outside. Dropping back just a bit. Try for gold racing in fourth as they make their way into the turn. Then threes over deuces. Cozy Cat. Tapping Cat. And the trailer still is aspect. Opening quarter went in 22 and 2. They churn around that turn. Where she told me to go is making a move. On the outside, Golden Candy trying to go with that one. Followed by So Street. Threes over deuces trying to mount a rally in fourth. Followed by Cozy Cat. Aspect begins to stride nicely from the back of the pack. They've got a quarter to go, and where she told me to go, cuts the half 45 and three, being pressured by Golden Kitty on the outside. Next in line, down toward the inside. Threes over deuces looking to slip on through. Those three with a shot of furlong to go. Threes over deuces with the rail. Where she told me to go on the outside of that one. Threes over deuces hemmed in on the inside. Oh, had to take up there to threes over deuces. It's edging away where she told me to go. Threes over deuces, second best, followed by Golden Candy. Going to be three, where she told me to go, across the finish line first was but was placed second for interfering with the four. Threes over deuces, who was placed first. Three over, over deuces returned 983, 82, 40. The next and last race is the first state distaff for Delaware bred or certified two year olds attracted a field of 10. Here they go in the first state dash. And they're off in the first state dash. And from the outside, Singlino breaks well. Down toward the inside, zip the lip. Also, meet me at Mundus, those three across the track in the first stages. Then a gap of about three lengths further back. We have a wall of horses across the track, about six of them. On the far outside, Tiz Golden looking to advance, followed by Kenny Had a Notion. Our hoisted mast is there, Latin Spice toward the inside as they race into the turn. Opening quarter went in 21 and four. They've been sizzling there, and on the outside, Singlino on the inside, meet me at Mundus. Two and a half lengths to May the Horse Be With You. Then a gap of two more to Tiz Golden. On the inside, Kenny Had a Notion, the favorite. New Year's block party beginning to advance now, racing in fifth and moving after the top two. It's on the outside, Singlino leading it by about two lengths as they turn for home. Meet Me Mundus racing second. Next in line is May the Horse Be With You, followed by New Year's block party toward the inside. Latin Spice, a furlong to go, and Singlino is strong, leads it by three lengths. May the Horse Be With You and charging in the second, followed by Meet Me at Mundus. Then comes Latin Spice, but it's Singlino holding on. Singlino will spring the upset, wins it by about two and a half. May the horse food you Lino wins the first state dash for owner trainer John Worsley and jockey Alexander Crispin pays 1949 49 20. We're out of time. That's it for tonight's show. See you soon. Bye bye. There's only one.